do I do? Good morning from Monterey Car Week 2022. We are kicking this vlog off with a bang because we just rolled up to the Quail Car Show, the coolest car show of Monterey Car Week. This is where all the hyper cars are, all the new supercar unveils from all the big OEM manufacturers and just crazy surprises every single year. So I'm back again this year to see some awesome cars, meet some great YouTubers, and to show you guys the latest and greatest in the automotive car scene. So I think this is my fifth Monterey Car Week now. Unfortunately, my brother is not here with me. He had a change of plans and he's gonna meet me later in the week. Without further ado, let's get in the show and let's roll into a nice cinematic edit of Quail. 2022. These skies of a different light, why noise it keeps me up at night? I can't help but think back to you. I wish that I could find a face that I would recognize. I replay the memory of you. It's been hard, you know I wanted to stay close of God, but there was no other way. Did you wait? Cause I've been counting the days and I'm calling up to say. I bet you guys haven't seen this car before. Look at this creation, all electric. Let's see, we got 820 kilowatts max power and 400 kilometer range. An electric supercar from Spain, I think. Super duper cool. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, signore e signori. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lamborghini. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lamborghini Urus Performante design follows performance where we reduce the drag, we increase the downforce. Does it have a gated manual? Does it have a gated manual? Does it have a gated manual? Yes, it has a gated manual. Okay, I was kind of joking about the gated manual. I didn't actually expect it to have a manual. This is one of 30 cars, I think, or 40 with a manual ever produced, LP640. As you guys know, we have the pre-LP six-speed manual, but this is a whole new level of rare. I think like 30 to 50 times more rare than the pre-LP Murcielago. So if I had to pick an all-out dream car since I was a kid, it would probably be this, a gated LP640. So sick, probably worth like $750,000 or something. Oh, we got all the Lambos, old Countach and SV. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? You need to comment down below. I get flat for this, but I say that I like Mercy Lagos more than Aventadors, and everybody's like, oh, what are you talking about? So, comment down below, Mercy Lago or Aventador. All right, my buddy Eric is letting me sit in this crazy creation of a 68 Dodge Charger that's completely redone with all custom carbon fiber body panels. How much horsepower? 1,000 and the very first elephant ever made. 1,000 horsepower elephant motor swap. Okay, round two of does it have a stick shift? There's no way this thing's a manual. Uh, of course not. Single clutch automatic. I think uh, 599s with a stick are maybe just as rare as LP640s. It would have been sick to go two for two, but this car with a manual I think is worth like over half a million dollars, whereas with an automatic it's worth like 150,000. Uh, but speaking of cool V12 Ferraris with a manual, we got this one right here, look at that. So this is a 550 Marinello. These all came equipped with the six-speed manual, which makes it the last V12 Ferrari to only come with a manual transmission. As you guys know, we have the 575 Marinello, the updated successor to this model. And as you guys know, we have ours with a manual transmission, which is very, very rare because most of them were optioned with an F1. So our gated 575 is one of, I think, only 246 ever made and one of only 80 brought to the US. And what we really wanted to achieve is not only acceleration and power and speed, 
which this car is an absolute world record holder, so it holds the record for the fastest acceleration of any road car. Lots of comfort features, connectivity, it has autonomous driving capability with 14 cameras, with a LiDAR, with a supercomputer, so it's very versatile. We hope to deliver all the cars to the customers within the next three years. Guys, this is the new Koenigsegg, and check it out. It has a gated manual, but it can also be automatic from what I heard. So you can switch between manual and automatic. How cool is that? CC850, it kind of looks like the old CCX body-wise, and it's limited production, probably costs a small fortune, one of 50, so good luck getting one, but this is so sick. Oh my gosh, insane. <laughs> Okay, that without a doubt has to be one of my favorite cars here at Quail. Perfect timing. I just walked up and then Christian von Koenigsegg hops in and starts it. I'm probably one of the first people to hear that car rev. That was crazy. It sounded so good. And the technology to be able to switch from gated manual to automatic. Koenigsegg and Pagani, like my two favorite coolest companies out there. I mean, who doesn't love those two? Epic. So this is my first time seeing the new MC20 in person. Gotta say it looks pretty good. I think it's exciting that Maserati kind of went out there after many years of kind of stagnation, dare I say, and come out with a cool new car like this with a bunch of power, 621 horsepower. Uh, one thing that's funny about this car, so I hinted on my Instagram page that Christian and I bought a new crazy car with 621 horsepower. So what did everybody do? They Googled car with 621 horsepower and everybody said, no way, you got an MC20. No, that's not the correct answer. So I challenge you guys to guess again on this comment section. We'll reveal it probably in a couple videos, um, but 621 horsepower, it's not a Mercedes. That's all I'm gonna say. It's not an MC20 and it's not an S65, SL65, none of that. So place your bets down below. We made it to my favorite booth here at the Quail and that is the Pagani booth where they went all out this year. Over 10 Paganis here. And one thing I love about the Quail is none of these $5 million cars are roped off. You can literally get so close to them, see all the beautiful carbon work, you can get up close with the interior to see all the beautiful leather work, the stitching, the metal work. Like, check out those pedals. Like, what a work of art this car is. Every inch, I say this time and time again, every inch of a Pagani is straight artwork. Anywhere you look, down here, even like the little mesh grill, look how beautiful the design is and the carbon work and all the colors and the exhaust. Look at the welds on this titanium exhaust. Are you kidding me? Just, I cannot get over these cars. Mark my words, as promised, one day we will own one of these things. I actually bumped into Horatio earlier and I told him, sir, I love your cars and one day, one day I will own one. But the question is, what Pagani do I go with? One day, do I get a Wyra with a twin turbo V12 or a Zonda, which on display, they have it. They have pretty much every single Pagani here on display. Here's a Wyra Tricolore, absolutely beautiful. Look at the blue carbon. Are you kidding me? Look at the headlights. Look at the metal surrounds on them. Absolutely gorgeous. And of course, Tricolore, the Italian colors on the flag, beautiful. I would probably want a coupe so you get those beautiful gold wing doors, but the roadsters are so gorgeous in their own right. Even though you don't get the cool doors going up, I mean, to have a top-down experience with a 
800 horsepower V12 behind your head. I don't think you can go wrong either way. So it just depends what deal comes up. Oh, and you guys got to comment down below. If money was no object, which Pagani would you take here? The Wire R, the Zonda R, the uh, the Wire Tree Calore, the BC Roadster, the Amola. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Which one would you take if you could only pick one? And then they have the new Wire R up on the stands. Gorgeous, gorgeous track focus car. And then look at this. They have not one Zonda R, not two Zonda R's, not three, but four Pagani Zonda R's. They're powered by a naturally aspirated V12 that makes the most intoxicating, incredible sound you will ever hear out of a car. <laughs> Well guys, I thought last year couldn't be beat, but this year I think topped it. Like absolutely incredible selection of cars there. Something for everyone. If you come to Monterey Car Week, it's a must go to show. Tickets are hard to get, you know, it's exclusive. And we're back out to the parking lot where we have Car Show 2.0 with many multi-million dollar cars. There's an F40 parked back there, an F50 and a Carrera GT just parked in the dirt on the grass, crazy. Ocean Ave, always be wild. Gosh. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that car's worth a lot of money. <laughs> oh, that car too, and that car too. And that one as well. Oops, it's recording. I'm just gonna hide, okay? Kay. No. All right, so what exactly do I say? Welcome to day two of Car Week. I'm your new host, Sasha. That is your name. <laughs> Welcome to Car Week, day two. I'm Sasha. Bro. <laughs> Welcome to Car Week, day two. I'm Sasha, your new host. So unfortunately, Sasha was not able to join me yesterday at the Quail. She was busy doing her big girl job at Stanford University. Uh, but today, Owen was nice enough to bring her down, our uh, resident pilot. You were flying the other day, that's why you couldn't come yeah, yesterday either. Flying the other day, but lucky to get some time off. Cruise down today, so we're all here. He flies Gulfstream, super cool. You guys know him from our aviation channel. If you haven't watched any of that, go check out JR Aviation. But anyway, today we are headed to Exotics on Broadway. Oh my gosh, look at all the cars. LP640, jeez. <laughs> okay, that, that's that been the story of my whole life here at Car Week. Even on the 10 minutes here, I'm like, Lamborghini, blah, 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 blah. 675 LT, oh my gosh, that's one of my dreams. Sasha, show <laughs> it. Great car, 675 LT. Okay, word on the street, AKA my text message back from the Strad man says that he is here at Exotics on Broadway with his Bugatti, which he just wrapped pink. And that happens to be like her favorite color on a car. So I really wanted to surprise her with the pink Bugatti. So, I would love to see a pink Bugatti. That's the goal. Bro, <laughs> can you be quiet? Chill. He's like revving his rusty oh truck. Dude. Why is he doing that? Is there a reason? They're so obnoxious. So without further ado, let's get in the show. Ready? Everybody good? Let's do it. We're good. Let's go. Okay, I think this is the loudest car here. I'm 20 feet away and my ears hurt after that rev. Unreal. Speaking of unreal, look at that Marlboro F40 livery. <laughs> Okay, so while this isn't the pink Bugatti we are looking for, it is still a pink Porsche GT3, still a pink supercar. And this car I saw yesterday driving and I absolutely fell in love with it when it flew by me uh, coming down Carmel. And something about this color, uh, hang on, let's make sure it's a color. What if it's like a wrap? No, I guess, it, yeah, we're good. Oh, yeah, we're good. See, PPF film, so this is an actual color. Whoa, look at the interior, what do you think? I like that, yeah, I was about to point that That's out. That's wild, this. they did like a retro look. Thanks so much, yeah, letting no us problem. see it. Whoa, okay, that is so cool. So he was explaining how factory carbon buckets don't have any lumbar adjustments and they're obviously not the most comfortable seats, so they go in, they put like an air bladder in there so you can adjust it while still having the cool look and the carbon backs and the lightweight, all that goodness. So that is really, really cool. Custom, but it does look 
factory in a way because Porsche is known for doing these crazy interiors, especially back in the 80s and 90s. Oh, these wheels are incredible. HRE, full carbon wheels, that is wild. Okay, super duper cool. So would you ever wrap your Camaro this color? Um, I think I would go for a more lighter pastel. I'd want it to almost be white, but just a hint of pink. Wow, okay, I know what you're going for, but this is still super, super cool. What is this, Ventador number 10? Fire! <laughs> the OG Lamborghini Urus. Double M O. What? L M double O two. That one. What? What? Oh, the purple car's moving. Okay, uh, it's almost pink. Uh, okay, Sasha loves this car. I still don't know how to pronounce it. Hispano Luisa or something. It's fully electric. I saw it at the quail. Whoa. Is that Jack Ultramotive? Oh my gosh! Oh my god! Rev it! I need to hear it! <laughs> That's the second time I've run into Jack now. It's hard to miss his car when he has a... I don't know what you call that rap. SF90 Ferrari. I know you're not much of a Ferrari girl, but what do you think? Who said I'm not a Ferrari girl? <laughs> you like Lamborghinis. Come on, we already know this. Two more cars I saw at Quail. What do you think of the eggs? Aren't they cool? Okay, Sasha is very... <laughs> Sasha is amused with the Electra Mechanica. She thinks it's so cool even though it's gotta be the cheapest car here. It's like an electric commuter car something. I don't know, it has three wheels and uh, one seat. All right, Damon's about to rev the SVJ and these people in the back are not ready for how loud this car is. Look at all the cameras, oh my gosh. I should have brought a car, but this Lamborghini is so sick. Get ready, these kids are gonna be covering their ears so fast. I told ya. I hear a V10. So that Carrera GT sounds so good, right? Which one do you take, V10 or V12? Oh, that's a hard one, but V12. V12. Sorry. V12. Okay, okay. Those are arguably like two of the best sounding cars ever produced, but the Carrera GT, I will say, the, uh, the V10 Carrera GT, that car still has catalytic converters. The SVJ is completely straight piped. Oh, okay, Sasha wants, <laughs> Sasha wants to play cameraman. What did he say? Hey! Oh. <laughs> hey, she can be whatever she wants. <laughs> Sasha's playing camera woman. Now, like I was saying, that Carrera GT, it still has catalytic converters. Damon was telling me it's got the factory headers, which have the cats built in. So, of course, it's not gonna be as loud as the straight piped V12 Aventador, but both sound great in their own regard. I would argue if the CGT was fully straight pipe with no cats, which he talked to me, he's thinking about doing. Straight pipe for straight pipe, honestly, I think the Carrera GT would sound better, but that's just my opinion, comment down below. I haven't been doing such a great job hosting because Jeffrey hogs the camera from me. <laughs> Insane. We heard what we thought were donuts. I thought it was a sport bike because the pitch was so high. Turns out it's DDE ripping donuts in the CGT. Holy crap, what a surprise. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little bonus clip there. We were walking back to the car and then we ran back. Damon, you crazy guy. I expect nothing less than to be ripping donuts. Right next to the cops. You guys saw that the cops went up there the so cops quick. Literally <laughs> we, were, we were like, what's gonna happen next? And yeah, those cops get a major pass of the vibe check. Go, 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 go. In the middle of the intersection. Monterey car, car week. <laughs> oh, 
holy crap guys are you kidding me 